How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, we got another Kobe hater. It's going to be a long video. This is a popcorn video. I'm going to drag this bitch. Who are these people? So, who do we have here? Dr. Liza Sequoia from Camus High School in Arizona. There's been some stuff popping off. So I'm going to take this family on this journey. But look at that mug. Look at her hair. Look at her face. She got some personal issues. And she feels some kind of way about Kobe Bryant. So let's go here first. High school principal who wrote Karma caught up with Kobe Bryant placed on leave. This is February 6th. High school today after they say someone made a threat against the principal on social media last night. Now it's all connected to comments that Dr. Liza Sakura made following the death of Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and eight others. She wrote on her personal Facebook page, not gonna lie, seems to me that karma caught up with a rapist today. Sakura later deleted that post. She wrote an email to students' families Monday, calling her initial reaction inappropriate and tasteless. The district put her on administrative leave as it investigates that comment. My focus right now is on supporting the school and the students and really listening to them um, uh, in terms of what they think should be the next steps forward in terms of um, repairing trust. A student walkout to protest Sakura's comments was planned for today, but will be delayed until tomorrow. Police are investigating the threat. All right, my royal family. So, before we go over to the next video, I want to point something out about this school. Let me see here. Okay, this Camus High School is 78.2% white, 1% black, literally 20 students. Look at that. Hispanic, 6.9, 138. Asian Pacific, 6.4, 100. Okay, one, no, wait a minute. 138 for Hispanic and 128 for Asians. Native American Indian, 0 0.4, eight students. Hawaiian, Pacific, Islander, 0.5%, 10 students, and two or more races, 6.7, 134 students. So I want y'all to keep that on your frontal lobe that this school is lily white. All right, as we continue on my royal family. All right, I'm going to play this video. I'm going to listen to what this dude going to say, and then I have something to read from this. You know, I don't support it. You know, um, I, it's hard for me to understand it. You know, I think um, anytime there's, there's a loss of life, or, you know, I, I hope that um, all of us come together and, and rally around that. And... Um, you know, it, it, it didn't come across that way. The Camas School District has placed the Camas High School principal on paid administrative leave after she started receiving threats online. It comes after a post on her personal Facebook page regarding the death of Kobe Bryant sparked backlash online. Devin Haskins reports. One after another, students leaving on their own and going home. Parents also stopping in to take their child home after threats made to the principal over her Kobe Bryant post. This isn't conducive to education. There was the threat of violence against the school, and I know they were planning a student walkout, yeah. and I don't want him to participate in something like that. First, the threats. One social media post that the district looked into said, just posted the school's info and told people to do what they have to do. Because of posts like these, the district had extra police stationed at the school, 
we take that seriously. <laughs> and so we um, contacted Camas Police Department and um, you know had them look at that, investigate it, um, to try to determine you know is this is this a safe thing. They determined there was no credible threat. Superintendent Jeff Snell said he first learned of the principal's post last Friday and immediately started an investigation. He says Liza Sakura's post doesn't meet their social media expectations. What we talk about is if it's a disruption to the school environment, then it kind of falls into a policy that we have. And, um, you know, obviously things like this get a life of their own in today's world, and it, it has become a disruption. And so that's something that we need to address. Sakura wasn't at school today after being placed on leave for her own safety. I talked with her yesterday and asked if she still felt the same way about her post. Do you still feel like uh, Kobe Bryant deserved to die? And that was not my intent. I guess when I think of karma, I think of what comes around goes around. Like I said, I posted the comment before I had any details. So um, it, was, it, was, it was in poor taste. I regret that. That apology rang hollow to some students. It just seemed really fake and just manufactured, both the email and what she said over the announcement. As far as what's next for Camas High School, Snell says the safety and support of students comes first. As far as Sakura's future, the superintendent would not address it. A planned walkout today was canceled and rescheduled for tomorrow. Students say they will leave class for nine minutes, one minute for each of the victims in the crash. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, let me, let's refresh that and see if we can get back there. Let me see, wait a minute. Let's take this down. Wait, let's see what's going on. Put that on mute. And um, what I wanted to do was to read her letter. And there's something in here key that she said to piss me off. And you heard one of her own, one of them students. Them kids ain't stupid. They know they own. You heard what that um, boy said. So anyway. Here it is. You may be aware that a copy of a social media post I made on my personal Facebook page is circulating digitally in our community today. I apologize to my staff and now I apologize to you. On January 26, after news broke Kobe Bryant's death, I made a comment to my private social media which was a personal visceral reaction i want to apologize for suggesting that a person's death is deserved it was inappropriate and tasteless um further i apologize for the disruption it caused to our learning environment today in education we remind students to think before they post online, especially when um, feelings are inflamed. We also teach our students about context, my, my emotions, and past experience got the best of me. My emotions and past experience got the best of me in that moment. We also teach our students that we that, that what we share online has permanency. While what I wrote was posted on a private Facebook account to people who are my friends was quickly removed. I acknowledge that um, private that private does not always mean private. I love being principal at Camus High School. We have a tremendous student staff and community. I've learned an important lesson, and I hope that I can earn your trust back. You ain't said shit, but um, we're going to get a little bit deeper into this. So some past shit. She been harboring some shit, and then she throwing lugs out like there was a private it was a private um, Facebook. So whatever friends you got on there, they leaked that shit out. So you don't have no friends with your puck ass face.
Hello, Kalen students. Um, it was important for me to try to get a chance to talk with each of you. Um, I know a video clip isn't uh, as personal as I would like, um, but it's the best I can do. Um, this has been a challenging week, um, but I'm grateful that I've gotten a chance to share the week with you. I think today um, it can feel like uh, a lot of times we don't have a lot in common with each other. Um, but a week like this, as challenging as it is, it kind of reminds us of what we do share as humans. It's a powerful experience, and it's something that I would never want anybody to have to go through again. But it's something that you're going to remember, um, and you're going to carry forward with you. And my hope is that we can all be better because of it. I've given a lot of thought about how to best support Camas High School. And I appreciate all of you reaching out to me and the conversations I've had about the path forward. You've all been so thoughtful and compassionate, and I can tell that your, best, uh, your focus is on the best interest of Camas High School. I really appreciate that. Trust between a principal and a school is so critical, and um, it's become clear to me in my time here that trust has been broken. It's caused a disruption to our school. It's demonstrated in many ways. Um, and it's also put you in a really difficult position of either being for or against Dr. Sakura, and, and that's not fair to you. I do not see a path to repair that trust that can happen in a way that doesn't continue to compromise your educational experience here at Camas High School. Camas High School will be moving forward without Dr. Sakura as principal as I've accepted her resignation. The road ahead will be challenging as we return our focus back to being students at Camas High. It'll take some time. It'll take us supporting each other. I'm confident we can make it work. In the coming days, I will be speaking with staff and developing a plan to support you in this new journey forward. My hope is that Monday will be the first day of a great rest of your year. Thank you again. I appreciate each of you. So she got the pimp in with her racist ass. She got the pimp in. But you know what? We're going to hear what she's talking about, too. Because she said something to piss me off. So, as we continue on. Wait a minute. Yeah, you got fired, bitch. It is, okay. yes. What do you have to say about that? Um, first and foremost, I spent much of today connecting with students. I have a career educator, 23 years, and I'm, I'm embarrassed that I made such a poor decision and let down my students. Um, we communicated with our community last night, my um, teachers yesterday, um, and then the students today. I am hopeful that my regret will garner me some trust moving forward. You mentioned in your statement that you always advise people about context. What generated that particular feeling on that night so that people might understand yeah. where that came from? Um, I you know, have some personal experience that generated the visceral reaction. I would say um, that I was uh, away from media at the time and just got verbal um, information that Kobe had passed. Didn't have any additional information. The first post came came down after I saw people's responses um, and I realized that I was going to take it down. The next post came up saying I had taken it down and at that time I still did not have context uh, of the, um, the reality of the tragedy. So basically what this bitch is saying, and we know she lying through her teeth, um, once she found out how Kobe Bryant passed along with his daughter and along with um, seven other people, then I, I, t I took it down. And again, it's some personal shit going on with her. And this is what I want to say before I get through it, and I'm going to say it again. And I'm saying it directly to the enemy. Y'all going to learn talking bad about us, doing funky shit towards us karma is going to come swift it ain't gonna be years ago and all that shit we out of our captivity 
my royal family. That's what I've been saying about coming out of our captivity. I know we probably don't see overall anything going on, but I've been noticing and a lot of the bloggers been noticing because we've been talking about how to behind the scenes, how when these people that have utter core hate for us do shit like she do and even worse than she do, the karma has been swift. The divine hand is real, but she that that part got me. You got some personal shit going on with you. Something happened to you, you supposedly say, and that's the first thing that come out of you. So they expose in they self. That's why I said, go over to Anchor after you finish listening to this. Pure fire. Some people question that because of the second post that came up, which was, it's my opinion. If Yes. If, if you don't like it too bad. Well, and it didn't say it didn't say if you don't like it too oh. bad because I have spent a lot of time apologizing to my personal friends from Facebook as well. What it said is if people are surprised I share my opinion, that surprised me. Um, I, I feel like I, in general, tend to be a great advocate, outspoken for students. Um, you know, in my role here, um, nearing the end of three years. Um, I, I try and do what's right. This was a situation where I didn't think before I posted. So basically. On your private Facebook, you must have gotten some reaction about Kobe's death and his daughter and those seven other people and you're lying through your teeth. And you was basically saying, fuck you. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. This is my opinion. You can take it or leave it. All right. Ain't it juicy now, my royal family? Let's continue on. Crooked face bitch. Terribly regretful about that. Can you put that into perspective now? If you have anything to say about what happened, what, what, what's appropriate to say if, as a principal? Well, I, what I've been talking with students about today is we hope in our building that when students make mistakes, we give them the opportunity to learn from them and we start a new day fresh. Um, I'm hoping that what I've learned from this situation um, that I'll be given an opportunity like that. I want to repair the trust I've broken with students. I want to continue to serve this community. I have loved every minute of being principal at Camas High School. And um, I hope one of the students said that my apology this morning sounded scripted. I'll, I'll be honest that I was so nervous because I had let down 2,200 kids that I did read it. Um, maybe in retrospect, I should have just gone from the heart. I have talked with students throughout the day, um, invited other students who've emailed me to come in. Uh, a poignant moment came from a young man who told me it's going to take a while to earn trust back. I told him I love my job and I'm patient and I'm willing to earn it back. Mm -hmm. Some people had said because you had counseled folks last year about these kinds of things being permanent that yes. you should have known better. Um, yes. It, it, I mean, it, in all capital letters, if you will. We are a school, we talk about think before you speak, think before you post. Clearly I didn't do that. And so it's when you're not practicing what you preach, it becomes, you know, not just that I'm remorseful, but I'm embarrassed that I didn't do that when it's what we ask of our students. Mm -hmm. Some are calling for you to resign. Yes. How do you react to that? Um, I will only say that I love being the principal at Camas High School and I will continue to do what it takes to earn trust back, to continue to show that this incident is not um, representative of the work I do to serve our students in our community and um, I'm optimistic that uh, my apology will be received and we can begin to move in that direction. How does that happen? Do you have a vision as to how you approach that? Because it's kind of an odd situation to say yeah, the least. Yeah, I'm listening right now to anyone who's reaching out. Mm -hmm. um, I have a family committee that meets on the second Wednesdays of the month. so. Um, I will be listening to them and their thoughts. Students who've reached out, I had one student suggest an assembly. For me, that's maybe too big of a forum. I did an all call today um, that came off as somewhat impersonal. So I'm talking um, with my mentors about uh, what might be appropriate so that um, more students can share their opinions and I can begin to have the conversations that will demonstrate I'm committed and I want to earn back the trust. Awesome. And doing this is probably part of that. Speaking Do, out today. Well, yes, and you know, it's hard when what I learned from posting writing 
the written word can be interpreted some ways, I really want to speak with people because I want them to be able to look at me and, and know that I'm committed um, to righting the wrongs I've made in this situation. This woman is evil and bitter, and I can read her, and you are not believable at all. Do you know my royal family? Whatever those death threats, because it was more than one, they're not going to, you know, they're not going to put out, you know, all the threats that they had and stuff. Over a thousand students didn't show up at school. So the school also had to make that business decision, too, as well. That affects their pocket, too, because you know how it is with enroll when, when them kids are enrolled. They want them kids to participate in school because that federal dollars in them schools. So. And I purposely, my royal family, played the videos in a certain sequence because we already know the bitch didn't lost her job and she was doing everything she could to hold on to her job and stuff. But um, before I play this 11-minute video, um, where is it at? Oh, here it is. Not gonna lie. Seems to me that uh, karma caught up with a rapist today. And... Then um, somebody amen and says, that's what I thought, too. And then another person, which was a white guy, you're unbelievable. And then um, another person said, I wonder what karma his 13-year-old daughter had coming or the other three people. Truth horrible posts about this tragedy just confirm his daughter died too did she deserve it then these her folks this is her private shit i guarantee you ain't no black folks on that so as we continue on my royal family let's watch her do everything she can to regain trust There's been quite a community uproar regarding your two personal Facebook posts regarding the death of Kobe Bryant. People are hurt by your comments. You issued an email apology to families, but parents are furious that a public leader like yourself would even say something like that on social media. How do you respond to that criticism? I am disappointed that I made the comment in a public forum like Facebook. I have learned that what we continue to teach our students that nothing's actually private on social media. Um, with that said, I made two posts. I put one up, I took it down, and I put another one up, um, all before having any details of the extent of the tragedy. Um, that was that was ill thought, um, and as I've shared in an apology, the result was tasteless, and so my apology is around a poor decision I made. As an educator, what lessons have you learned from this, and what lessons does this teach our students? Um, a lesson I already knew, which is think before you speak, think before you post, think before you engage in any sort of type of communication. Um, what I'm hoping my students learn today is that I have a strong desire to repair trust with them. Um, I read a prepared apology to them that because I was so nervous, because I've disappointed 2,200 2, kids. And so I read it and students told me it sounded fake. So I spent the rest of my day reaching out to kids, meeting one-on-one, two-on-one, four-on-one, six-on-one, to really talk to them about how I can go about building trust back with our students. And I'm also interested in doing that within our school and community. What are you hearing from the students during those, those visits? Um, many things. Um, frustration. Um, I, I didn't put together a piece for our students that the incident referenced is from 2003 and nearly none of our students were born then. So they know a different public figure than the one I referenced. I have learned a little bit more about Kobe Bryant and since 2003 his approach that I wish I had known before I made a rash decision to post something to social media. The students are saying things that um, I'm agreeing with. Um, one student said to me, uh, kids will trust you again, but it will take time. And I said to him, I love my job. 
I love this school and I love the students, and I'm patient and I will take whatever the time it takes to build that trust back. What are some things you need to do to build that trust? First, I'm listening. So any student, one student emailed me uh, an idea to have an assembly. I thought an assembly is too big, much like an all call on our school. It might not feel um, personal enough. So uh, there have been some other suggestions and I'm working with uh, district support to plan some next steps uh, based on what we're hearing from our students and our staff in our community. So what does this moment teach us about the power of the written word? Um, multiple students today reminded me of a message I sent out last year that words matter. I actually uh, intend to go look at it tonight and remind myself of something I said a year ago that it seems I might have forgotten a week and a half ago. And that students remembered what I said then is really the message that words are permanent. And in today's social media, um, even though Snapchat goes away, it doesn't really go away. Even though you can delete a post, you can't really take back things that you've said. And so I've talked with students today about the nature of social media um, and how that one of the things I hope to continue to model for them is make a mistake, learn from it, and grow. That's what makes us human. So the reactions about the Kobe Bryant death happened within an hour or so after the, the accident, correct? Agreed. yeah. So walk us through your emotions at that time, what you knew, what you didn't know, and then talk about the criticisms you're getting from a lot of people that are here locally. Um, I received the news over the phone from someone. They just shared that he had died. Uh, my visceral Facebook rep response posted at that time, um, I could tell by the audience and the commentary of my friends that I missed the mark, took it down, posted something else immediately that said, um, you know, my judgment of him is the same way people are judging me. Again, I didn't have context about the death, um, so seen separately, that might seem a little bit insensitive. What I know is, as of some news sources yesterday, the comments are being connected to be. You're lying through your fucking teeth. She keep going back on this bullshit that um, once she, um, you know, it's either or. Once she found out in the fashion that he passed, then you took it down. Now you're saying something different based on how you posted that. Um, you um, got a, a reaction and you said out of your mouth when the, the with the first the reporter that... Um, you pretty much post it and then you cut the guy off that basically whatever I post, I don't give a damn. I'm going to stand on my opinion. You're lying. As we continue on my royal family. Being racist, what I can tell you and um, what I hope students and staff in our school would tell you is I've been working diligently um, towards equity measures. We talk about personal bias in our building. Um, we read articles about what students of color face in our schools and opportunity gaps. The comment I made was in no way related to Kobe Bryant's race. The comment was about allegations made against him that he later addressed in 2003. With all of that said, it was insensitive, um, which I later understood the breadth of because I understood then um, the size of the tragedy. And that's something that I want to make sure people understand um, Kobe Bryant's race had nothing to do with my post. So the post was deleted how quickly after? I, you know, I don't have an actual timeline. I posted it. I went to do something. I came back and saw that um, the comments were going back and forth and missing my intent. So I deleted it, um, made my new post. I, I'm guessing it's within an hour or two. Now let's go to that second post because people are sometimes more upset over the reaction to your second post mm -hmm. when your criticism, the criticism there are saying that you're not remorseful about it, that you'll say whatever you want to say. Well, um, the, I don't know that people understand that the second post happened on the 26th and that it was as soon as I deleted the other post, that was the second post. Um, I Bitch, you can't defend the second post. You shit out of luck. See, every time they get to that second one, your ass start fast talking. Oh, I'm taking joy dragging you 
you lying ass, puck face, racist bitch. I am remorseful. I am remorseful because my student school day was interrupted yesterday and that breaks my heart. I am remorseful that people whose hero, um, who, who students in our building look up to, that I said something so insensitive, not having all of the information. Um, I don't know that people saw the second post until my apology yesterday is when I understand the second post was shared. I believe people have an assumption it came yesterday. Those two Facebook posts came uh, connected on the 26th. Okay. Can you address the power and healing nature of forgiveness? I just ended my day with a senior who came up to me and asked if he could give me a hug. He told me he did not agree with making a post, but that he had forgiven me and that he hopes moving forward that more students can connect with me. That's what I feel about forgiving, that it's what we model in our building, that if you make a mistake, you own up to it, you do something to restore the mistake you've made, and that you try and grow from whatever it is you learned. And what I want people to know is, today was a hard day, it's the hardest day ever in my career in education, 23 years, but I learned something all day long, and I will continue to learn as I listen to the students who want to talk, the families who continue to reach out to me, um, colleagues in other districts who as news is breaking are reaching out. What the fuck did you learn? You ain't even said what you learned. No, what you learned was that you were surprised that your own reacted the way that they did. See, that's what happens when you try to desecrate royalty. So y'all keep doing what y'all doing. Um, asking how they can help and support. And so I want people to know that is my hope. I hope my apology is accepted and I hope there is forgiveness on the horizon. What have you learned? Um, sort of that no duh moment of think before you post. Um, as silly as it sounds, uh, you know, I made a comment to my friends on a closed social media site that you know better. There's no such thing as privacy on the internet. Um, I knew that. Here I am still. I have learned that um, our families have raised eloquent. Um, all right, all right. <clears throat> my royal family. I'm Becky. All right. And, you know, <clears throat> he asking me, you know, what did I learn? Well, what I learned was I'm a racist bitch and I can't get a man and, um, you know, and I'm just, you know, really <laughs> hurt that my own would portray me like this. And that nigger, oops, I meant this, uh, that nicker, nicker, nicker. I didn't say the, the N word. I put the, the N in the, 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 you know, you know, remember Kobe used to play for the Knicks? No, he didn't play for the Knicks. And I also, um, 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 learn my ways. Um, but, um, I know that I am dusty and, um, this will haunt me for the rest of my life. I didn't do anything. I'm a Susie Green Cheese. I care. I really do. Please forgive me. Well spoken students, who many of whom took the time today to come tell me about the experience and the discussions at the dinner table or in the cul de sac last night and share opinions. And I've also learned that there were a lot of those discussions. Yeah. There, yeah. And, I, and a lot of students shared them with me. You know, I've also received. Um, some negative, hurtful emails, and I'm trying to temper those people's emotions, um, you know, with what I'm learning in this situation. And again, I'm hopeful that what we model for our students, you know, it's about being human, that we make mistakes, all humans do. Um, and that what's important is that you grow from them, learn from them. The biggest learning for me today is nobody's infallible, and I messed up. You're in a public, leadership role, are they held to a different standard? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it, it goes without saying, especially in a community as tight knit as ours, that um, when you're a public figure, which I think we only think of in education in terms of movie stars or athletes, truthfully, when you serve communities, you are a public figure as well. And so that's another learning I made is, is you know, really, I don't have a private life in the sense of, I don't get a Sunday off when I made a bad decision that this rolled into my school and that disappoints me that I let kids down or I let my staff down or I let our families down. Where do we go from here? That's a good question. I um, wish I had a prepared answer to give you. Um, I wish I had a plan ready and hatched. I continue to listen to people, um, the students in the hallway, some students who have questions for me, um, a student I met with today who wanted to make sure that the comment wasn't racially related, and so he wanted to ask me and look me in the eye. Um, I will continue to listen to what people think, and I will continue to rely on my mentors in the area and within our district who um, I believe really want to see, moving forward, want to see the community heal over a situation that I created. Bye, Becky. Your ass is gone. That shit was not genuine at all. And um, we don't give a damn. You don't have no job. Now you got a private life. That's what your ass get. I know you feel some kind of way as I speak. But check this out, my royal family. After listening to this, go to anchor go to my community tab and i have more to say she will never ever 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 forget this she was harboring something now she got something more to harbor this woman is evil to the core and more of you will expose thyself. I take joy, like many in the royal family, that you don't have the support that you thought that you had, that your own did not back you up. Sweet, oh so sweet to me. Juicy, juicy. Juicy. <laughs> All right, my royal family, I'll see y'all over on Anchor. Render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe, Becky, one more thing. What is going on with your grill? Don't you have a dental plan? Did it kick in yet? You should have used it long ago. Ashe to the royal family.